Once in a while, we come across a movie that's too short to make it onto god-awful movies, but too amazing to resist. And when we do, we bring it here to a segment we like to call God-Awful Minis. Minis, 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 minis. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched Pages of Death. <laughs> it's an anti-porn propaganda film about how... Uh, quick look at my browser history clearly shows that I'm the most deadly serial killer in the history of the world. <laughs> That's the movie. And Eli, how bad was this propaganda film? Well, if you ever thought to yourself, damn, I wish those people who told kids that jerking off made you go blind and your palms hairy got to make a movie, then you will love Pages of Death. They do. It's like 50% Columbo episode, 50% reminder about what it looked like when America was great again. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, so it's basically an anti-porn propaganda flick from the, what, late 50s, early 60s? 62, yeah. Yeah, and, and so we start with Dwight Eisenhower's bottom directly addressing the camera here. <laughs> Yeah, Tom Harmon. Tom Harmon looks like he has one more question. <laughs> <laughs> He looks like he's about halfway between Ted Cruz and Freddy Krueger's moisturized uncle. <laughs> but he gets a lot of shit at Thanksgiving. We got all that skin. Using <laughs> all Neutrogena. All over your whole body. Weirdo. So now this fella shows us the picture of Karen Fleming, 11 years old, and he goes, pretty, isn't she? I mean, you know, in a couple of years, sure, but totally fuckable, right? You can see it even now. <laughs> Yeah, if you find a more bright and cheerful child, bring her to me. I need more skin. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he gives us this spiel about how, like, you know, her parents thought they could protect her, but they couldn't. Yeah. And the music is crazy. It's throughout, but right away, it's nuts. Like, apparently I'm about to watch a, a Looney Tune called Pages of Death <laughs> is the, the tone I'm getting here. Right. That's appropriate. Mysteries in the Air, starring Peter Lorre. <laughs> <laughs> we used the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> when America was great again. So so we cut to a house in Sepiaville to tell our story. Uh, apparently Dad's getting home, and Mom's worried because Karen hasn't made it home from school yet. Yeah, this is going to be the weirdest episode of Leave It to Beaver ever. <laughs> yeah. Leave it in Beaver. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, apparently there were two voices for adults in 1962. The male one and the yes. female one. That's yeah. how that works. Right. And the mic throughout this movie, but especially in this scene, is working like the comedy bit and singing in the rain. Just like every time they move, it's like... Hush, hush. <laughs> hush, 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 hush. <laughs> 1960s Brian, they're like, man, can you make it? Fuck you. <laughs> Banana oil. <laughs> he wouldn't have said fuck you yet. No, right, exactly, exactly. So, and just to give you a visual here, dad here looks basically like Herman Munster fucked Wreck-It Ralph. And mom <laughs> looks like what my grandma was shooting for, like what she was clearly aiming for, but didn't quite get. Yeah, she looks like she's going to write a book called Masturbation is Murder, she wrote. <laughs> yeah. A lot of Angela Lansbury in there. <laughs> and mom's basically like, should I call the cops? And dad immediately is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Suspicious. I kept expecting the dad to have done it because of his reaction there. Right? Like, no. Yeah. Just say it normal. It, just act like you didn't rehearse yelling no immediately. <laughs> Just take right. a pause. Yeah, I have evidence still to destroy. Are you crazy? Yeah, Dad is trying his damnedest not to be at all worried that his 12-year-old daughter has been missing for hours. He goes, well, she must be somewhere. I'm like, man, you fucking nailed it, Dad. Well done. <laughs> uh, and then she finally convinces him to let her call around to see if she's gone to a friend's house. And apparently phones used to operate by dialing in a combination, like a lock. What's yes. going on here, Noah? Explain this to me. It's amazing. Did you have to they... unlock it to get to the cell phone inside that weird box? <laughs> amazing that the 911 concept didn't come out until after the rotary phone, isn't it? So, so then we cut to this weird montage of people shaking their heads. And I say weird because most of them are on the fucking phone. Yeah. Shaking their heads, but uh, that which means that nobody can find Karen. Yeah, but this movie is basically what my mom imagines every time I don't text her when I'm home. She's just yeah. like, "No, oh, he's dead, <laughs> instantly dead." <laughs> right. And we learn in this scene she had a five-block walk from the school. Yeah, 
Yeah. It took him three hours to get worried about that. Yeah. So now the cops are here straight from flashing the junior varsity track team. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they don't have a lot of time because they're supposed to go kill Kennedy later. But they'll, they'll, they'll get to that as soon as they can. They're about to shoot up Columbine. So, yeah. So they're asking some basic questions. And, and they're like, well, uh, Karen may have stopped at Baker's Variety Store. All the kids go there. And, and yes, yeah. the cops are aware of, yes, of Baker's. Yes. We know Baker's. We know all about bakers they say it just like that mm-hmm. it's really cre- all the male characters seem like pedophiles so far <laughs> right. yeah. could she have stopped at the malt shop or the five a dime and the slave auction <laughs> <laughs> that's your one <laughs> so no it gets one <laughs> <laughs> so they give her a picture uh, of the girl to help her look for her. they he the dick doesn't even give her back the frame yeah and you got it's- something in a swimsuit <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> Might be easier if we could identify our <laughs> knees. Uh, so, like, and they go to leave, and right before they leave, the one cop turns around. And he's like, "Don't worry, like, she's probably not dead. And even if she is, they probably raped her after they killed her. She didn't even know. You know what? I'm not making this better. I'll go. <laughs> she's being yeah. real negative about this. <laughs> he literally gives her a stat. Like, he says, "There's only a one percent chance your kid got raped and murdered." He says, "99 that it didn't," <laughs> but he's saying, "There's a one percent chance that your kid got raped and murdered." And mom's still upset. Sleep because, well, you know. Bitches be tripping. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess the cops head over to the drugstore to see what's what. And this is where we meet Bugs Bunny doing his Bugsy voice of a yeah. of a fucking uh, <laughs> b- drugstore owner. Baker could not be sketchier. Baker wants to pitch the, immediately when they walk in. He wants to pitch them some sample magazines. That's 50s for <laughs> porn, I, I do believe. I yeah. was convinced that Baker killed her. Because basically the cops walk in and they go, we want to ask you some questions. He's like, I didn't do it. You hear me? I didn't do it. This is chocolate syrup all over me. Chocolate syrup, I say. <laughs> He's literally refusing to cooperate with the Missing child investigation. Yeah. And yeah, he's talking like a bad guy from Dick Tracy the whole time. <laughs> right. It's so fucking bizarre. But so what we eventually learn in this scene is the reason he doesn't like these cops is because these two cops sh- tried to shut down his thriving porn business. And that's what he's being so bitchy about. But he does tell him that there was another kid named Paul Halliday in the store at the same time that he saw Karen last. Yeah, he used to have he used to be rowdy, but now he just buys porn in the store and sits there reading it. <laughs> I, I kept expecting the cops to be like, did the little girl buy any porn? What kind of porn did she buy? <laughs> so then I guess with all the information they needed from the five and dime, they head over to the Halliday house to the music that Quentin Tarantino jacks off to. Um, also, uh, if you're one thing you can really enjoy about this movie is the prolific smoking indoors oh. Outdoors, <laughs> around children, blowing it back between each other's faces. It's <laughs> it's when America was great again. <laughs> and, and, and and they're constantly smoking a cigarette going, porn is bad for you, see? It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> so they show up at the Halliday house where mom is pretty darn sure that her son didn't murder rape anybody. But, you yeah, know, that's we how she greets him. them. Yeah. It's like, oh, hello, detectives. My son didn't rape and murder anybody. Would you like some coffee? <laughs> One number two, my son did not rape and murder anybody. Did your son kill any little girls this afternoon? I don't I don't think so. You can ask him if you want, but probably no. Paul, Paul, did you kill a little girl today? What, Mom? No. I didn't. <laughs> And also, okay, so we meet, so this is the Halliday family. We meet the dad, too, and his character is going to be important because apparently he was the big wheel, that's their term, big wheel on the city council that stopped their anti-porn ordinance. Right. Yeah, and they're worried he won't cooperate because they bucked him. The, again, that's bucked. B as in boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, so it was going to get way more exciting if it was the other way around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's pissed. He's mad. He says, you're investigating a, a missing girl at this hour? And the cops are like, Yes, we, <laughs> so, which whenever that happens, we just investigate it right away. <laughs> well, and two, they, they they pull out all the stops to make you hate Mr. Halliday, the dad. It's not just that he stopped the anti-porn ordinance. Also, they're like, uh, uh, what's the girl's name? Fleming. Oh, I may know a Fleming. What does her dad do? He's a truckloader. Well, I wouldn't know that peon. No. Right. Shouldn't you be out arresting Negroes? <laughs> Is it, yeah. Exactly. There's a weird moment where he goes, shouldn't you be fighting criminals instead of looking for missing children? And I was like, I feel like that's not an either or situation. <laughs> like, that's what you yell at a cop as you're getting busted for your third DUI. That's not what you say while they're doing a missing child investigation. <laughs> right. So Paul comes in, they check his palms for hair, nothing. But he's definitely 
a murder raper. You can just kind of tell looking at him. Paul looks like a racist caricature of an Asian. Doesn't he? <laughs> Paul Fist at Tiffany's. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so he was in his den the whole time, so it couldn't have been him. His den, where he keeps his stereograph and his silhouette cutouts <laughs> and his weird steampunk goggles. <laughs> she actually says he has his own hi-fi and projector out there. I'm like, wow, you were trying to date that. No 8-track? So, I so was in room. My sex den. My den. I was in my den. Are we done here? Shit. So then they head back over to the Fleming household. I guess this is the next day or whatever. And the mom is still freaking out about her damn missing daughter. When the hell is she going to get over it? Right. Well, the mom goes, something's happened to her. I can always tell when something's happened to one of the children. And I'm like, how often does something terrible happen to one of your children that you've developed a spider sense? <laughs> oh, fuck. It's Thursday. <laughs> So, and of course, the phone rings. It's for the cops. They didn't have cell phones back then. It's kind of interesting. Um, and, and the cops find out that they found Karen Fleming's body. She's dead. And yeah. there's this great moment here where, like, the, the one cop turns to the other. is like, they found her body in a ditch by the city dump. And the other cop goes, murdered? Um, <laughs> yeah, was she seriously? No, she died of malaria and then buried herself. That, yeah, right. What are you what fucking the fuck talking about? Are you yes, talking murdered. about Ned? Right. <laughs> and then they do the worst job of breaking it to their kids. Like, okay, everyone whose kids alive, step forward. Uh, 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 not so fast. <laughs> okay, uh, question: What do Karen and Napoleon have in common? They're both dead. <laughs> Geez, kids are expensive these days, aren't they? What if I told you. Hmm. So, so now they they're driving out to the dump, and my music note here is: a distant thunder had four extra bars of ominous. If you guys need them, <laughs> and the city dump is extremely well lit for the middle of the night. When it's like they put a sun up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it made me very nostalgic for when the city dump was just like a giant hole where we threw all our trash what? until we realized that shit all leaked into the water. And ah, again, the 50s. <laughs> they're walking through this open pit of garbage, smoking cigarettes, going, that porn is really unhealthy, though. It's going to cause all kinds of problems. <laughs> so they, they so they wander out there. They find out. They find her. She's covered. They pull the cover back. Say, yes, it's a dead girl. And all I can write in my notes is, damn it, Eli, it's right on the whiteboard. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Instinct yeah, at this point. What was just accomplished? Like, okay, boys, she is dead. Like, you suspected. <laughs> We're going right. to drive away now. That, well, that's that it. That's police that officer... That police officer was damn near miffed by that. He almost took off his fucking hat. <laughs> yeah, there's no forensics that go on. It's just I want to I want to take a look at her. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, she was pretty cute. So now we we wind up at the teacher's house in a scene that just doesn't fucking matter. Um, so that the teacher can read us Karen's "My Very Happy Life" composition, where she wishes that she could jump high like a frog. Yeah, apparently short film movie bingo, everyone has to read a shitty kid's poem for us to feel bad that they died. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know. How was his poetry? <laughs> yeah. And our essay is called My Very Happy Life. There's no reason why anyone would murder me, especially not my teacher by Karen. <laughs> and the teacher reads the whole thing. Yeah. The and cops. the teacher is not a strong reader. Like, can we talk about the fact that the teacher has to sound out multiple three-syllable words? Operate. 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 I did it. I did it. It's I the gave 60s. myself a gold star. I Not helped. a lot's expected by women at this point. <laughs> Is this a good clue? No, no, but keep trying to read for us. That's adorable. <laughs> I was fine with it. She had sort of a like a gaunty... Kate Winslet thing going on. I liked it quite a bit. Mm. So, yeah, so during the uh, the little composition, she says, like, my baptism and my communion were the best times of my life. And I'm like, it's a clue. George Pell did it. But they didn't go that way. <laughs> she also goes, like, I'd like to get all the education I can get, which isn't much because I'm a girl and it's the 50s. I dream of maybe being a teacher or a nurse or a secretary or a housewife. Right. Yeah. I have many possessions and I am not a Martian. Again, very normal human being. <laughs> I have all the things a girl needs and dolls. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like Ted Cruz trying to prove he's a person in her. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison Ford sitting across with, from him, you know, like, like meatloaf. Why are you helping the turtle? Desserts and Paul Mall unfiltered cigarettes. 
1962 is awesome for me. I love the way this scene ends, too. Like, the teacher goes, well, I sure hope you find her soon. And he goes, we already have. And she's like, oh, good. He's like, oh, you can't hear the ominous soundtrack. I think you misunderstood how I meant that <laughs> when I said we already. I, I My if, bad. My bad. If we had found her, why would we have come and interviewed you just to find out about the kid we just rescued? <laughs> Doing some follow-up. What's her writing like? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess now it's back to the Halliday house, because all these cops do is just a circle, you know. Luckily, someone here was implicated in this murder. Yeah. Oh, I would have gotten away with so many murders in the 60s. <laughs> I mean, I get away with a lot of murders now, but I would have gotten away with way more in the 60s. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Less tarp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... So, you know, the mom is all like, you know, oh, I've heard that you found the the uh, body. What kind of fiend could do such a thing? You know, and, you know, well, she's like, I don't know. Let's go check your your kid's sex dungeon and, and find out. And I wrote in my notes, please catch Paul jerking off. Please catch Paul jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> Just got a belt around his neck. I'm a naughty boy. Oh, hey, banana <laughs> hey, oil. Gee. Spotter, spotter, help. <laughs> How about that FDR? <laughs> So, uh, you know, so they they show up and, and Paul's actually run out for a minute. So they start snooping around without a warrant or anything and find that his shoes are all garbage dumpy. Mm, might as well shoot him on sight. Yeah. <laughs> also, do these cops have a warrant or anything? Look, I don't know much about the law, but I assume this is how the law worked in the 60s. Just men in six-piece suits walking around <laughs> looking for clues. <laughs> Why was everyone in formal wear in this entire fucking movie? <laughs> Made no sense. Must have been so uncomfortable back then. <laughs> right. And then, of this course... This is how making a murderer happens, guys. This is how <laughs> making a murderer happens. And then, of course... The detectives find his porn stash. Yeah, he's got scorching sex stories, mm -hmm. shows all, tells all, and hardcore porno slides. Porno slides! Yeah, the stuff <laughs> I leave on my home screen would kill this actor. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I just said he pulls out the little slides. He goes, this is strictly hardcore stuff. Most porn is cut with baby laxatives or boric acid or something, but this is, this is pure porn. <laughs> right. And they also pick up his shoes and they're like, oh, it's got tar and gravel. And they actually say, let's run these through the tar and gravel checker at the lab. Like, <laughs> what else might it be? Like opium and small stones that aren't gravel. What are they checking for there? <laughs> That becomes important in the next scene. So, and of course, mom and, uh, has gone off to get dad. So they come in and see the porn stash. And mom is convinced that it's not Paul's porn. She's like, no, he's into big black asses and amputee stuff. This doesn't look like his <laughs> way to. Hmm. I'm sure he's just holding on to someone else's porn. Yeah. Though. You know, normal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> is, this, right. is this your porn? Uh, I'd like to have my homicide lawyer present. What? Like, they, <laughs> they, they, there's, a, there's a missing link here somewhere. <laughs> I love too. The dad's like, uh, "Don't worry, officers. I'll take care of it." I wanted to cut to Chris Farley in his Matt Foley outfit. <laughs> You've been using your papers not for writing, but for <laughs> cleaning up penis juice. Anyway, I'm not. I don't do impressions. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So then Paul comes in with his da 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 moment. And keep in mind. So far, what we've established is that Paul has pornography. They have no steps, these detectives, between that and, yeah, he must have murdered the little girl. This, yeah. That's their conclusion. Zero, yeah, zero steps. Tar on his shoes and porn. Yeah. And the porn is related, apparently, yeah. It, and the porn is a one-step conversation. They're basically like, hey... Can't help but notice you had some porn. And he's like, yeah. And they're like, you ever go to the dump? And he's like, yeah. And they're like, you go down that road? And he's like, I killed her. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks so easy. Yeah, right? <laughs> and then we get this phenomenal line. This is the, obviously, this is the fucking buzz clip of this movie. The kid goes, I don't even know why I did it, officer. And the cop goes, I think we do. And then he, like, glances angrily at the porn. It's this yeah. lady's one-piece bathing suit, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? You killed yeah. her. I did. Hate to say it, looking at porn doesn't make you a murderer. Sometimes looking at porn keeps me from being a murderer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Gonna tweet that shit at me. I don't even know you, fucking egg. <laughs> <laughs> you. you didn't watch that YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. So then they head back to the drugstore. Now that they've got the killer, I guess it's time to take out the kingpin, the porn dealer himself. 
Right. right. And basically, he's like, man, can't believe you caught that kid. You never know, right? And they're like, you should know. You're the one who sold him those books that explicitly tell you to murder people. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you sell Paul these magazines and a rusty machete? Uh, no, just the magazines. So you admit it. <laughs> uh, what? Right. He also says that the hardened criminals down at the jail couldn't stand this porno. And I'm just imagining like a jail full of criminals like, oh, no, come on now. Come on now. What's that, Goatsy? Yeah, so the- Google Goatsy. Google Goatsy and then show it to your kid. Don't look at it first. Don't, just Google yeah, it. And show it to your kid. Don't Google Goatsy. So, so it, yeah. So, but the clear, not conclusion, but precept <laughs> of this movie is that some amount of pornography makes you kill people. And I'm just, I, if I had to guess, I'm saying it's Japanese and it involves doing something gross to feet. If I had to guess. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. Oh, and then, he, of course, he's got to throw this line out. The, the, he says, the problem with porn is that it makes you confuse lust for love. I'm like, no, the problem with porn is it makes you think pizza delivery guys get laid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he also says that uh, sex is dirt. It teaches you that sex is dirt, and it's okay to try perversion just for kicks. Why else would you try perversion? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Scientific experimentation? <laughs> oh, fuck. And then, of course, so, like, the cops go to leave, and the camera falls them out, and damned if there's not another hairy-palmed murderer in waiting reading a porno book right there. Is he holding yeah. a chainsaw? No, it's just an erotic novel. Fine. Same, same difference. But still, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> National <laughs> Epidemic. Baker's like, you got your murderer. And he goes, we got one of them. And he's like, nope, you got all of them. 100% of the murderers. <laughs> Pretty much completed. Small Mission complete. town. <laughs> Odds are there's not more. And then, of course, we've got to go back to that narrator that learned us the lesson in the first place where, you know, he tells us that, like, Karen's last name was fake, but there was a little girl named Karen who got raped and murdered. And the porn thing is almost certainly what it was I mean, how else could a murderer possibly happen with these phenomenal mental health resources that we've got in the 50s? You know who agrees with me? J. Edgar Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover! <laughs> Blames a bunch of sex-mad criminals while he was probably wearing women's underwear. <laughs> He's and not I, crazy at all. Bobby Kennedy deserved it. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they conclude that the killer couldn't possibly be mentally ill, otherwise he'd have been chained to a bed, so it must have been the porn. And then, of course, we also get the, uh, like, where he has to stop, and he's got to go, like, uh, think about it. Your little girl could be murder-raped. No. Think about it a little longer, a little more. <laughs> In detail. More? Yeah. So now the rape, yeah. and now the murder. Huh? Now the, okay, ready for this? Murder. <laughs> now the rape. How's that feel? <laughs> huh? You want to give money to the hour of St. Francis now? Right. Uh. Well, and, and he throws this little statistic out at the end. He goes, sex crimes rise with the availability of porn. It's been proven, which is why starting in 1996, every person on Earth was being raped at all times in all orifices. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, make America raped again. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, and then it gives us an address where we can write in to stop the porn at, fr at the Hour of St. Francis in Los Angeles. I wonder how they did. Is, is there still porn in Los Angeles, you think? <laughs> a West Coast listener can let us know for sure. <laughs> well, obviously our hands are too busy to spare a thumb to rate this movie, so instead we'll evaluate with a quick question. What is the most disappointing video that you ever thought you were about to jack off to that still turned out to be better than this movie? Ooh, uh... Janae Rice in the elevator. Yuck. Ooh, but then I stopped. I like but then I stopped watching. <laughs> I just got the video today. I just got the video today. Oh, I'm gonna go with the the dogma debate telethon. I just, I just keep waiting for one of those audiobooks to be erotica. David won't return my emails. <laughs> I can't imagine why. And of course, if my wife is lying about the size not mattering shit, you can also catch full-size versions of this bit every Tuesday morning on our sister show's hot friend God Awful Movies. Between now and then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Banana oil down. Banana oil down. Mysteries in the air. <laughs> the entire world went on to get raped and murdered by Al Gore. <laughs> the narrator went on to have a great fall. Eli raped and murdered. The entire world. <laughs> 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 <laughs>